differences during talks held earlier this week. A four-month ban on live mainland poultry imposed in February following the discovery of the bird flu virus ended last month. But the supply of chickens has not resumed yet because of disagreements over quarantine measures. Local and mainland officials held talks on Thursday but failed to resolve their differences. Uh, due to a lack of consensus between the experts of um, Hong Kong and the mainland, uh, we have not been able to decide upon a date um, for resumption of uh, live poultry supply to Hong Kong. The health chief says dealing with the low pathogenic and highly pathogenic strains of avian influenza requires vastly different methods. He believes both Hong Kong and the mainland should adopt the same standards, treating all poultry as at risk for the highly infectious strain. And as part of efforts to prevent cross-contamination, the government has found the site in Ta Kru Ling to separate local and mainland poultry. Jonathan Lee, TVB News. This year's Hong Kong Diploma for Secondary Education results will be released on Monday. For the first time, students with special learning needs sat the exams. Rachel Zheng has the story. This teacher helped four students who have autism and other disabilities prepare for the HKDSE maths exam. Although they only took one subject, it's the first time students with special needs have set a HKDSE test. Many students with autism and other learning difficulties can be weak at handling numbers, abstract concepts and calculations. Mrs Ho was worried that her son would not make it. She could not sleep the night before the exam. The curriculum exams for these students are the same as those for normal students from mainstream schools. But these special needs students think using visual processing. The teacher had to spend extra time to help them visualize the concepts so that they could understand the maths. Maths teacher Wong Kong Lao said if you have set expectations for them and they also like the subjects, their performance can be extraordinary. With the results coming out in days, they feel like other students. It doesn't matter if I fail, this special needs student said. I don't have to be so nervous, I've tried my best, so it's okay. Their principal believes that no matter what research they get, they have already made a huge breakthrough and their ability will be recognized. Rachel Jung, TVB News. Turning overseas again, American health officials have shut down two research labs and stopped shipping highly dangerous germs to other facilities. This follows the mishandling of bird flu and anthrax samples by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. NBC News reports. The CDC, responsible for tracking every infectious disease on the planet, including anthrax, influenza and smallpox, is reeling today after a series of embarrassing mistakes. I'm just astonished that this could have happened here. I'm upset. I'm angry, I've lost sleep over it, and I'm working around the clock to make sure we do everything possible to resolve it. Today, the CDC acknowledged that a sample of animal influenza sent to a lab in May was contaminated with the deadly H5N1 bird flu, exposing lab workers. Even worse, it wasn't reported right away. As to why it took six weeks for that to be uh, made um, uh, apparent to us, I can think of no valid explanation. H5N1 bird flu is so infectious that millions of birds in Asia have been slaughtered just to keep the disease from spreading. Another mistake? Last month, 86 CDC employees were potentially exposed to anthrax after samples were mishandled. Anthrax is a bioterrorism agent used as a weapon to kill five Americans in 2001. Adding to the problem, the shocking discovery last week of six vials containing the smallpox virus in a storage room at the National Institutes of Health. Today it was revealed that two of those vials contained live virus capable of infecting people. The virus should have been destroyed 40 years ago. In response to the incidents, the CDC today shut down its flu and anthrax labs and stopped shipping any infectious agents from its highest security facilities. This should be a wake-up call that uh, this could have happened in any number of labs around the world. And tonight, there shouldn't be a lab director in the world sleeping easily. 
No one was infected in any of these incidents, but the fact that the public could have been sickened is a black eye for the most trusted public health institution in the world. Ukraine scrambled jet fighters to strike at rebel positions today after separatists resumed missile attacks on government forces near the border with Russia. The airstrikes come after a rebel missile strike yesterday killed at least 23 Ukrainian soldiers and wounded dozens of others. Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko has promised to find and destroy the pro-Russian separatists responsible for the attack. At least two more Ukrainian soldiers were killed and about 20 injured today in fighting near the city of Luhansk. Russia and Cuba have signed about a dozen agreements to boost ties during a visit by Russian President Vladimir Putin to the country. Putin met former Cuban leader Fidel Castro. According to the Kremlin, the two men held talks for about an hour discussing bilateral relations, international affairs and the global economy. Putin also met Cuban President Raul Castro. And Moscow says it's forgiving 90% of Cuba's Soviet-era debt, totaling more than 35 billion U.S. dollars. All right, Tony, how are you for sports? That's right, and big news from the NBA with one of the, uh, most, fam the most famous players returned to his old club. LeBron James is making a sensational return to his old club, the Cleveland Cavaliers, after four years with the Miami Heat, which saw him win two NBA championships with the Florida team. When he left for Miami, he angered many in Cleveland. But all is forgiven, it seems, with fans ready to welcome him back. I think most importantly for the organization, uh, this is one of the great moments in the, in the history of the club. Uh, the king is coming home. What more could you ask for an organization? In Cleveland, fans were delighted to see LeBron back, with many holding impromptu celebrations on the streets. Even the White House commented on the move with its spokesman talking about President Barack Obama's admiration for LeBron. Well, it's the last World Cup weekend before the tournament packs up and the fun resumes four years from now in Russia. First up, before tomorrow's final showdown between Germany and Argentina, is the third-place playoff with Brazil taking on the Netherlands. Louis van Gaal has set his players the ambitious target of finishing the World Cup undefeated. The Dutch coach doesn't think his side's loss to Argentina on penalties counts because defeat came from the spot rather than in open play. So if they beat Brazil later tonight, this current squad will leave the World Cup having not lost at all other than on penalties. Van Gaal says his team is not going to underestimate their opponents will have a point to prove after their 7-1 thrashing by Germany. Of course, no World Cup will be complete without its animal predictions. In South Africa, we had an octopus... This time, it's a psychic turtle who picked Brazil to reach the final earlier. That didn't quite work out as planned, but maybe his next prediction will be a little better. Holland to beat Brazil tonight. Meanwhile, German and Argentine fans are gearing up for the real deal tomorrow, the finale at the Maracanã to cap a wonderful month of football. The famous Copacabana beach was a sea of blue and white as Argentine fans flood into Rio de Janeiro. And finally for tonight, Nobel Prize winning poet Pablo Neruda has been spotted walking on the streets of Santiago, Chile. Yes, he's been dead for 40 years and no, it's not his ghost. An initiative by the Pablo Neruda Foundation figured out a way to bring the prolific writer back to life for a few hours during the 110th anniversary of his birth. A moving projector together with a speaker allowed the black and white images of Neruda to move along the front of buildings, giving the impression he was reading his poems as he strolled down the street. The ghostly images were taken from old films in the Foundation's archives. Neruda, who is famous for his love poems, won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1971. That's very cool. It is very cool. That's the news. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Good night. One of the most important things is that every day you have to be careful to be careful. 今朝仲对我咁好，转个头就唔理我。我系你个心嚟噶，对个心好系要日日 keep 住食得健康。贵格燕麦有唔同花款。
，燕麦有助降低胆固醇，令你个心由朝到晚都咁冧。贵格多花款，你嘅每天健康专家。World Championship Boxing returns to Macau. Chinese national icon and twice Olympic gold medalist Zhou Shi Ming will fight on July 19th at the Venetian Macau Kotai Arena. Book now at kotaiticketing.com. Sun Life Financial presents. The weather report is brought to you by Sun Life Financial. Hello, everyone. It was mainly cloudy today with a few showers and isolated thunderstorms. It was very hot with sunny periods in the afternoon. At 5 p.m., a southerly air stream was affecting the coast of Guangdong. Up until 5 p.m., today's temperatures range from 28.3 to 33.6 degrees, and the current temperature is 30 degrees Celsius. One millimeter of rain has been recorded since midnight. The very hot weather warning is now in force. So, Freddie, how's the weather tomorrow? Mainly cloudy with a few showers, isolated thunderstorms at first. Temperatures will range from 28 to 33 degrees. There will be sunny periods and a few showers in the next couple of days. Tomorrow's air quality health index will range from low to moderate. And the maximum UV index forecast for tomorrow will be about 10. Now, here's the latest global weather update. Rain in Shanghai, showers in Taipei, cloudy in Xiamen. Cloudy in Guangzhou and Chengdu, thunderstorms in Macau. Cloudy in Beijing, Seoul and Tokyo. Thunderstorms in Bangkok and Manila, rain in Ho Chi Minh City. Cloudy in Kuala Lumpur, sunny intervals in Singapore, rain in Jakarta. Thunderstorms in New Delhi, sunny intervals in Karachi, rain in Mumbai. Sunny in Cairo, showers in Nairobi. Sunny in Brisbane and Sydney, sunny intervals in Melbourne, showers in Auckland. Showers in Toronto, thunderstorms in New York. Sunny in Vancouver, foggy in San Francisco and Los Angeles. Cloudy in Manaus and Rio de Janeiro, sunny intervals in Brasilia and Sao Paulo. Showers in London, Amsterdam, Frankfurt and Zurich, rain in Paris. And that's the weather. Have a great evening. It was brought to you by Sun Life Financial. Life's brighter under the sun. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire them. You banging my back! I'll kill you! You can't walk there. It's a handicap zone. Sunday. The 18th on Pearl's Weekend Blockbuster. We can't explain everything we see. The world is full of wonders. We're the line between world and the much weirder world. What were you after? The truth. What are you after? World peace. We're not exactly a team, but we're in a position to do some good. You all right? We'll deal with that later, at length. Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. premieres Monday night at 10.40 on Pearl.